Danielle, take one mark. Marcella, take two. My name is Brittany McGowan. I'm a NAMI ambassador and very passionate about mental health. So I actually seeked NAMI just because my challenges, my own personal challenges with mental health and kind of going through the journey of my own healing really inspired me to want to be on the side of the people who were talking about it and, you know, taking away the stigma. So that was something that was really important to me. What made me lean in with NAMI was the fact that it felt so comfortable. I feel like it was a really welcoming space. You know, I feel like whether you have a clinical diagnosis or not, it's just a safe space for you to share and feel like you can get help, you can get resources. So that was kind of what, what connected me and helped me lean in. I wasn't always really comfortable about sharing, you know, my mental health struggles. I would even go as far as to say that I didn't even really recognize them within myself. I think I was in a place where I just accepted my anxiety as normal. And so I thought because I was able to pick up and keep going and keep moving and you know show up for work and keep doing life, that that was just normal. But once I started to get more educated and realize that that, that actually isn't our normal, you, know, you shouldn't have to feel that way, you shouldn't have to feel overwhelmed with sadness or anxiousness. And so it was really in exploring that, learning more about that and understanding that for myself and wanting to help other people understand that if they're feeling that way, they have an opportunity to address it or know that there's help, you, like, you don't have to do it alone. That was kind of how I got involved and, and what inspired me to get involved. What really started me on my mental health journey, so to speak, was 2020. I would say that's what that's the time when it was uncovered. I had dealt with anxiety in the past. I think I kind of was in a space where I just thought, you know what, I can deal with it. I just kind of brushed it off. But for me, uh, during 2020, during the pandemic, was when I really had to face a lot of issues that I didn't even realize were there. For me, I quarantined alone for most of the time, which kind of made me reflect a lot and look back at my life as a whole. I realized that I was kind of on this trajectory of just what's next, what's next, what's next, and let's just keep it moving. But having that time, though it was really difficult, gave me the opportunity to, to reflect and ask questions. Um, it wasn't easy <laughs> at all. I went online and was like, okay, how do I deal with this? So I was like, I can journal, I can, you know, I kind of went through all the things that made sense that I could, you know, grasp just because I felt like, no, I could handle this. And it wasn't until I did all those things and the feelings weren't going away that I realized, you know, maybe I need, I need a little bit more help here and that's okay. So I did, I seeked out a therapist and um, really leaned on my family and I made the choice to actually leave my apartment. And I ended up moving with my family towards the end of quarantine, which was probably the best thing for me to do just because I just felt like I needed to be around people who are really supportive and who could kind of help me navigate the feelings that I was going through. And that was in itself kind of was tough. You know, being at my age and being like, oh my God, I'm going back to my parents. Like, you know what I mean? Like the whole psychological of that. But I'm really glad that I did and I took that time to heal and and um, that was really important. Well, okay, what made me realize that, that that was maybe the way to go other than it wasn't working was just having more self-compassion. For example, if my friend told me what I was going through, I would just have a different reaction I had to take a real look at myself and realize that, you know, maybe I wasn't acting in self-love and it's okay to admit that you need help. For me, I had to come to terms with that because of maybe a stigma that even I had that if you need help, it's because you, you know, can't get up, you can't do these things. And, and, th and this is why I really wanna share my story because it doesn't have to be such a hard struggle. It could just be like a day-to-day -day thing. It could just be like, hey, I wake up and I, I feel, lonely or, oh, hey, I wake up and I, I feel empty. I get so, I get severe anxiety. I remember I used to get so much anxiety even 
for normal things like work stuff. So these are things that I just really want to talk about so so people know that that you don't have to go through it alone and there is no stigma and I you know the more I talk about it with with people they're like, "Oh my gosh, I I feel that way too or I felt that way too." And just that connection, it goes back to that like self-compassion for me and being able to be there for me as I would for someone that I loved. It's important to share, at least for for my recovery story is it's not always just, you know, upward trajectory. It's it it's um you know, it's kind of like wavy, right? So some days I feel great and some days I struggle a little bit. I think the self-compassion for me has really come in to understanding that that's okay. You know, it's okay to have days where I feel like maybe I'm feeling a little low. That's okay, that's like totally normal actually. Me and my therapist did like inner child work type of stuff. She was like, imagine yourself as a little child. You know, what would you do if they made a mistake, would you say, why are you making this mistake? Come on, you should be feeling better. It's like, no, like you wouldn't. You would give them love. You would say, it's okay. It's okay that you're you're having a challenge today. That's that's okay. Like I, I'm here for you, you know? So I really, really try to, to um, make those adjustments for myself to be able to have that compassion for myself. And that's kind of what changed everything. And it's also allowed me to hold space for other people dealing with, with the same thing. Taking care of myself has definitely helped me be able to, to take care of others in, in a way that feels really supportive in the sense of not trying to fix anything, but just being there, allowing for someone to share and hold space for whatever they're feeling. It also helped me understand myself more a little bit. You know, sometimes when someone shares, you you get like ahas and you're like, oh my gosh. You know, it could be something totally unrelated. Having that dialogue with people has been really helpful for me in many ways and, and it has helped me connect more with other people and my family has noticed a difference, my friends have noticed a difference and oh, my mom's like, the way you're sharing is inspiring me to show up differently. So I just wanna share as much as I can so people just don't feel alone. Like that's the biggest thing. Cause I feel like that was the thing for me is feeling alone or feeling like because I had the emotional capacity to get up and show up still that things weren't that bad or because I knew that, that there were people who were struggling with tougher, more challenging mental health issues that maybe mine just were like, it was okay to kind of just sweep under the rug. But I really want to encourage people to take what they're feeling seriously. Like you deserve to be happy. That That's like my message is like, you're not alone and you deserve to be happy and you deserve to wake up every day and feel good about yourself. To not have to battle anxiety. That doesn't have to be your norm. And there are resources and there are people that you can reach out to and you're worth it. Like you're worth that investment from yourself. My moments of hope really stemmed from self-love and being able to learn more about, you know, my needs, who I am, how to fill my own cup. But truly, like I have always leaned a lot on other people, even if they if they don't realize it, you know, seeking validation and things like that. And so for me, it's my hope has come from understanding that through healing that I am whole. When I have moments where I feel like I'm, you know, having a bad day, I'm having a, a moment, I don't try to change it. That's the big thing for me. I have embraced acceptance. I have learned to not identify with my feelings and see them as passing moments, things that just pass through.